Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing the Riga Magician in a 15 plus 2 game on LeeChess.org. Alright, so this player is pretty high rated at 2296. What shall we play today? Hmm. Let's play a Sicilian. Yeah, pretty strong player. Their highest rating. Blitz about 2061. Exactly 2061. And this is 15 plus 2, remember, so there's a little bit of an increment. Let's go into a mainline con. And c4. All right, so maybe we'll have another hedgehog position, which I played recently. Knight c3, and then I'll play queen to c7. The approaches with bishop b4 are pretty tempting. A lot of white players here rule that out with a3, just stopping the bishop from coming to that square. If white does not play a3, I'll consider doing this, creating a pin and threatening the pawn on e4. I like the switch to the green board. I've been enjoying this lately. Versus the brown one, I think it's a little bit easier on the eyes. And someone made an interesting comment that uh, green supposedly helps you concentrate better. <laughs> and I haven't verified that at all. But for most of my chess... I play on a green board. Like, I think the the, the roll-up board that I have here at my house, which I've used to play in tournaments before, because in the U.S. you actually have to bring your sets to tournaments, uh, that's green. And I always like using that board. So this username is homage to Mikhail Tall, of course, from Riga, Latvia. And he plays bishop e2, so this invites bishop b4. I must confess that I'm not as familiar with the positions after bishop b4, so I'm tempted to just play in normal hedgehog fashion. But this is what I came to do, so let's do it. So putting pressure on the knight, and in turn, threatening that e4 pawn. White could deal with this problem by playing something like queen to d3, trying to cover both squares. Although then if I were to take on c3, they'd have to recapture with the pawn, since taking with the queen would lose the e4 pawn. So I'm curious how they'll respond. Also, I may play knight c6 and try to attack that knight on d4. Many options for black. Hope you guys have had a good weekend. We have officially opened the doors of Chessable. By the time you're watching this, you'll probably be aware of that. You may have even registered on the site. And I'll be making a little video, just an introductory vid, welcome everyone and thanking them for their support because you guys have shown uh, an incredible outpouring of support for Chessable, and we really want to make it a good site. And this is our first full week of operation, so uh, we're optimistic. My opponent has not yet moved. I would suspect they will make a queen move. Maybe something like pawn f3 to support the e4 pawn. But I would anticipate queen d3 if I had to pinpoint a single move. Shout out to J. Bartholomew 2 and Atrophied in the chat. <laughs> They're spectators. All right, so queen d3, as suspected. So now, do I take on c3, or do I play knight c6? I'm kind of leaning towards knight c6, because that immediately attacks d4, and I wouldn't mind a trade on that square. And I don't exactly have to take here immediately. So if I do, let's say bishop takes c3, pawn takes c3. I'm mildly concerned that white will play bishop a3 soon and try to stop me from castling. I mean, I could get around that by taking and then immediately castling myself. But I just wonder if I even have to give up the dark square bishop so soon. I really don't think it's necessary. Let's just play knight c6. So also hitting d4. Knight e5 might be in the works too. Attacking the queen and also the c4 pawn. And white takes. Here I was thinking take with the d-pawn so as to open the light square bishop. You could take with the b-pawn, and in fact in a lot of Sicilians you do want to take with the b-pawn. But the benefit of taking with the d-pawn is that if I can play e5, 
I'll have shut white down in the center, and maybe I can comfortably develop a bishop to, say, the e6 square. So I think I will recapture this way. Now I'm anticipating that white will castle. And then maybe e5, just directly. Nope, a3 instead. Okay. So hitting the bishop. Now if I take, queen takes is possible, because if knight takes e4, then white would win the pawn on g7. So I'm thinking about just backing up to the e7 square. Yeah, I think that would be okay. Let's do that. So we didn't get the exchange in to double up white's pawns, but we have, I'd say, slightly improved our structure by being able to take with the d-pawn on c6. So white plays an immediate f4. I could go e5 right now. And then if white were to castle, I can castle. They might take on e5, queen takes, bishop f4, something along those lines. White has a small space advantage there, but queen c5 check, bishop e3. I could even play the queen back to e5. I feel like I'm fine there. I do think I should play e5 right now before white gets a chance to play e5, which would cramp me and push this knight back. So let's try to make use of this pawn push. Hmm, an immediate queen g3. Yeah, I didn't see that move. It's a good idea, though, attacking e5 and also g7. Uh-huh. Overlooked this one. I just kind of assumed white would castle or do something with the pawn in the center, either take or push. So, true, this move is irritating. Now, I could play... I could castle, but they'll take on e5, and if I were to play knight d7, then I can see that bishop h6 is going to be an issue. Hmm. So that's a little off-putting. So how to defend both these points? There's probably no good answer to that. I think it's impossible. I may be going down a pawn now. Maybe I'll have to play g6, and then after, let's say, f takes e5, just play knight d7. But, ooh, then d7. Ah, d7 I can take with check at least, and then recapture on e6. So if g6, let's say, then f takes e5, knight d7, maybe bishop f4, supporting the e5 point. Queen b6, something along those lines. I'm down a pawn, but at least it's it's doubled for white. Double isolated on the e-file. Okay, let's play this. I don't want to compound the problem by starting to think a lot. Although, when you have made a mistake, you do want to uh, try to reassess the position and not lose your... Uh, center of balance. So I didn't make like an immediate move there. I at least tried to soberly assess the position and find the objective best way to play. We'll see after the game if this is the <laughs> objectively best response to queen g3. I have no idea, but this is what my instincts say to do. I could try to bring my knight into a blockading role. So Let's say I don't happen to win the e5 pawn. I mean, I could try to go knight c5 to e6 and at least block these pawns up in the middle. White may decide to play knight d5 at some stage, and then if I take with my c pawn, they could take back with, let's say, their e pawn, straightening out their structure and threatening d6. That way they would have two strong pawns in the middle, and especially if that push were to be threatened with a fork on the queen and the bishop, Black could be in trouble. Based on these early developments, I think that knight c6 was probably mistaken on move 8. I probably should not have played that way. Maybe taking on c3 with check was the better option. At least now white is thinking a little bit. There's two main options for here, here for white. Bishop f4 supporting the e5 pawn. 
or some other move, probably castles, whereby they would just let me take this pawn and try to develop an initiative. We can be pretty certain that white is going to attack me somehow, because if I manage to recover this pawn, I'll have a better pawn structure, and if I can, let's say, castle or um, maybe develop my light square bishop, I should be all right. So expect white to do something regress aggressive, regardless of what happens. Um, okay, so bishop f4. Move that crosses my mind here is g5. I wonder how sound that is, because if g5 bishop takes g5, I have rook g8, and I'm on that bishop a couple times. I see they could maybe throw an e6 then. Queen takes g3, h takes g3. I think I'll get some compensation out of that, though. I win their bishop on g5, they win my d7 knight, and then at the end of this line that I'm calculating, I think they have rook takes h7. So maybe that's not too big of a deal. So I could play g5, try to disturb this bishop. I could also go queen b6 here, which I think is the original move I mentioned. Stopping white from castling short and hitting that b2 pawn. If I did that, castling queenside looks consistent for white, just guarding b2 and safeguarding their king. Maybe then I have something like knight c5, and I can try to do what I was alluding to, which is uh, use the e6 square either for my knight or my bishop as a nice pivot point, blockading e5. So I'm debating between, between those two options. The thing about g5, I feel like I can win this e5 pawn, but I wonder if something like just bishop e3 in reply, and then say, I don't know, say... Say queen takes e5, queen f2. My position looks shaky. I feel like I feel like the g5 pawn push is going to weaken me. It certainly weakens the f5 square. And it creates a target. So I'm leaning towards queen b6 and going after this pawn and trying to go knight c5 next. Hmm. Something of a tough call. Yeah, let's try queen b6. I think this is more of a decision based on feel. I calculated a couple lines, especially with g5. Like, g5, I think I can win my pawn back, but I didn't like the structure I was incurring there. The pawn on g5 would just be strange. It goes against my, my positional fiber. <laughs> I feel like I'd rather see white castle queenside anyways. Although I can't quite describe why. We could also play e6 here. Okay, they're going to play b4. Interesting. So maybe a5 now? Trying to attack that structure. I guess they can play c5 then. Hmm. C5 is annoying. Maybe knight f8 here, and just immediately get that knight into the e6 square. Perhaps that is the way to go. Because a5, c5 looks like it could be a problem. Queen d4 doesn't doing any, do anything. White could just play rook d1. If g5, probably bishop e3 at this point. c5 would allow knight d5, that's out of the question. Yeah, I might have to play knight f8 and start maneuvering a little bit. Knight f8, let's say bishop e3, queen c7. I'm still worried about that knight d5 possibility. <laughs> I'm pretty concerned about that, but... Okay, let's go for this. Blockade, right? Hmm... Knight a4 could be a problem. Maybe knight a4 there was better. This might also be really good. Yikes. So if queen a7, knight a4 now, is that the idea? And then if knight e6, knight b6, rook b8. It's a pretty gross knight I have to deal with on b6. <laughs> I'm not having fun there. 
Yeah, queen c7 is just running into the e-pawn push, so that's bad. Queen d8, rook d1. Bishop d7. I'm in a pin there. I don't like it. I am threatening bishop h4, though. So at least I've got that going for me. <laughs> so queen d8. Huh. Queen d8. Why well, could even just castle, though, right? I'm pretty fearful of the knight d5 move as well. So let's say queen d8, rook d1, bishop d7, castles. That seems like a normal continuation. Knight e6. We're holding fast for now. Okay, I'll try that line. Queen returning to its original square. No shame in my game. White has been allowed to make so many pawn moves, though. Helpful pawn moves, it should be said, on the queen side. A3, B4, C5. Yeah, here, bishop H4 is not going to work because they take on D8 with check, so I must do this now. Probably just castles at this stage for white. Mm -hmm. Now I think I have to play knight to E6. As much as I would like to avoid that move. So if knight e6, let's say white plays rook d2, just trying to double. Probably I have time then to play queen c7 and maybe even castle queenside if I'm lucky. Again, I'm very fearful of knight d5 or something coming to d6. But I'll have to take my chances. Queen f2. Hmm, it's a weird move. I must say, I don't really understand that move. Because bishop h4 wasn't a huge threat anymore. There was no king on e1. White's queen could have always fled to one of these squares. Why would you play that? I mean, it creates maybe some indirect pressure here, although there's not an immediate threat. Maybe bishop h6 is the idea? Just trying to get at f7 purely? That could be the plan. Hmm. They might just be arguing that I don't have a good counter to that. So if queen c7, bishop h6, or some bishop move, let's say. I could try castling queenside then, but they take f7. Maybe I take e5, they take e7, I take c3. It's probably rook takes d7 at the end of that line. Not good. I wonder if I could castle in a bishop h6, then play hmm, some sort of exchange sacrifice, but I doubt it's going to be working. The other thing I could do is take on f4, just get rid of that dark square bishop. But the problem with that, I think, is queen takes, and they're on f7. If I were to castle there, then bishop g4 just wins material, I think, due to the pin. So maybe I have no remedy to that. So I'm thinking about queen c7 just to try to go castles queenside and hope for the best maybe I can even pull my knight back to d8 very ugly but tough decisions must be made in bad positions so we'll try to evacuate the king We've got a little crowd developing. 20, 20 spectators. Watching me struggle. <laughs> yeah, bishop h6 expected. Okay, so maybe knight d8. But knight d8, maybe bishop c4 then. And again, they're on the f7 pawn. And knight d8 really kills my chances to get my king to safety, doesn't it? Maybe castle, and then if queen takes f7, play like rook d to e8, and just try to hold the bishop and threaten queen takes e5. Hmm. 
Yeah. We're taking abortive action now, but I feel like we've been abort in abort mode for the last, I don't know, 10 moves. <laughs> so, all right, so white does take bishop g5. They take, knight takes, then they can move their queen to defend this pawn. So I was thinking rook over, but I wonder if, if uh, rook takes d7 is a problem there. Very well might be. Hmm. I must keep my dark square bishop, I think. I don't know that I can afford to trade that piece. What if bishop f8? Bishop f8. If I could trade the, the dark square bishop and also gain a tempo, I would consider that. My idea there would be to try to induce bishop takes f8 so I can take with my, let's say, d rook, and I'm on the queen. And then if I can win e5 next, I might be all right. It's a lot of what ifs. Bishop f8, rook takes d7, queen takes. Hmm. I think that should be all right. Okay, I'm going to try it. Look for a swap. It might just be good for white to take, and then after rook d takes f8, play queen e7. Yeah, because then if I go rook e8, they can play queen d6. And the queen on d6 is especially annoying. So maybe if bishop takes f8, I should take with the h rook and just give up the h7 pawn. Then let's say queen takes h7, rook takes f1 check, followed by queen takes e5. I would be on the knight in that case. So that's not so bad. Knight to a4. Hmm. Another move I hadn't considered, but it might be a good one. Yeah, knight a4 is kind of brutal. Because now if I take h6, they take b or they go b6 check, king b8. Knight takes d7, let's say king a7, and queen takes e6 at the end. And I think I'm just down too much material there, probably losing. Bad stuff. I don't see a good way out of this. I might just be losing. Yeah, I, I really don't see a good response. I could play king b8, but knight b6 still comes. And maybe bishop c8 then? To try to salvage something? Okay, let's try it. That's better than bishop takes h6 at least, I think. We're very far down on time. Can I get away with knight takes c5 here? Probably bishop takes f8 would refute that. Yeah, I'm not feeling good about this move either, but I'll play it because I'm under a minute. So now there's various capture possibilities. Well, I could take my queen, my rook, my bishop. <laughs> A smorgasbord of potential captures at White's disposal. Sometimes, though, in such situations, it can be hard to figure out which piece to take. So at least there's that. Okay, so here I have to take with the king. If I took with the knight, then rook takes d8 would be the answer. All right, here I think I have to play king back to b8. No other good move. Ah, I think I see what they're going to do. They're just going to play rook takes d8, and then after knight takes, then play rook takes f8. Yeah, and I'll be down a piece. I could play bishop takes h6 here, but they take on h8, or even rook takes b... Oh, no, rook takes b7 is not possible, but just take on h8. Yeah, so this is over. Okay, I'll just take here just so they can demonstrate what they're going to do. Rook takes f8. And I will be down a pure piece, so I am going to resign. 
Okay, so well played by white. I think things really started to fall apart when I missed queen g3. Yeah, I just straight up didn't see this move, and white must have seen it because they played it really fast. Like, as soon as I played e5, I have a feeling it's already bad for black after this. I had to give up the e5 pawn. Maybe g5 is better here, trying to ward off the bishop so I can take e5, but it felt very sketchy, positionally speaking. In retrospect, though, I think it's a better chance than what I did. Because queen b6 was uh, refuted in pretty brutal fashion. b4, white just coming at me with the pawns. I mostly focused on castle's queen side, but white does not have to castle. They can leave their king in the center for now. Because if necessary, they always have bishop e3 attacking the queen on the diagonal and just forcing me away. So c5, and I was on full retreat mode here. I mean, I, I didn't lose material straight away, but it was becoming clear with every passing move that white had everything under control. Queen f2 I thought was strange, but that move turned out to be strong. It's just an odd-looking move, and white played it right away. I don't know, it wouldn't be my the first candidate move that comes to mind for me. But it is hard to defend f7, so looks good. Okay, so let's go to the analysis board and see. <laughs> I can see my average centi pawn already. It's not very good. <laughs> Although, you are going to make more mistakes in bad positions uh, because, or I shouldn't say that. Um, if you're in a bad position already, it's hard for the computer not to continue disliking your moves, let's say. <laughs> so you can expect your centi pawn to go up, your average centi pawn loss when you're in a bad position. So let's take a look at this game. So we started out open Sicilian, and then I played the con. I had a game against uh, Molson ABC123 a couple games ago that turned out to be very interesting in the Hedgehog. I just wanted to play it a little bit different this time around. So that's why I played this line with Bishop B4. I have a lot more experience with uh, the standard Hedgehog setups, though. So like B6, Bishop B7, D6, Bishop here, Knight BD7, all that jazz. And the game against Molson ABC123 was a good example of that, I think. Yeah, so here white played queen d3, and I developed knight c6, so maybe I should take on c3. The engine says I should just castle, but what about this line? Pawn takes, because here if queen takes, there's knight takes e4. So yeah, pawn takes, knight c6. Yeah, it very much likes it for white still. Maybe it's similar to the game in a certain way. Same pawn structure, except that white has double isolated C pawns, but I don't have a dark square counterpart to white's counterpart bishop. So knight C6, take, D takes, and then A3. Yeah, kicking my bishop. Because here I don't think I can really justify taking on C3. If I do, then white takes, and I'm unable to take here because of queen takes G7. Very strong for white, so... So I played bishop e7. Yeah, f4 looks like a good idea. And now maybe I should stay back and just castle. But it felt like if white was allowed to get in e5, then my position is just clearly worse. The engine says plus about a half pawn for white. Looks really comfortable for the Riga magician here. Space, two bishops. I have a light square bishop that's not going to get in the game. Or I guess they don't have the two bishops, but... um. Yeah, <laughs> given the poor impression that this bishop on c8 makes, it, it almost seems like they do. So, yeah, I, I probably should play castles and just bide my time. As soon as I play e5, it's already plus one in white's favor. So black has to tread carefully in this line, it seems. If you're going to play this aggressive way with bishop b4, you have to be willing to deal with the consequences in that white may have counterattacking resources and black may ultimately miss the bishop if they decide to take on c3. And even if they don't, you kind of saw what happens. Not sure I would repeat this line. Or if I do repeat this line, I got to study more games and see how black combats the potential problems. Chess is a constant uh, trial and error. Uh, you know, 
trial and error game, let's say. Not wording that in the best way, but it's just one long series of mistakes and adjustments. Mistakes and adjustments. And occasionally you play a game that you're completely happy about, but even in games that you win, it's rare that you don't have something you could have improved upon. Obviously, a game you lose like this, you're going to have many things you can improve upon. <laughs> many takeaways. Yeah, so queen g3 and trouble on e5 and g7. Nasty move. The engine wants me to play h5 here. That's a really weird move. Don't know I would have seen this move. <laughs> What's the point? So if queen takes, just rook to g8, I suppose. And if take here, then knight g4. So you're creating kind of an outpost on g4 for the knight. Supported by not only the bishop, but now the pawn. And maybe I have a chance to win back e5. Bishop f4, g5. Okay. Yeah. I may need something precise. And in fact, this looks good for black. If I can force the bishop back and win this pawn. Having the h-pawn up and... Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe this idea coming at white at any time is helpful. Bishop e3. Yeah, h4. Kicking the queen. Queen f3. Now we can take the dark square bishop and then probably win e5 next. Black is rocking here. No dark square bishop anymore for white. So if h5 had been played, it looks like white might not want to take a pawn and instead play f5, according to the computer, and keep some advantage. h5 is kind of nifty. Carving out the g4 square for our use. Okay, so I played g6. And white took on e5. And here I played the knight back to d7. I briefly thought about knight h5, but I was talking about my positional instincts earlier, and this didn't appeal to me for the same reason. It just looks really ugly, having these two double isolated pawns. And big advantage for white in this, this case as well. So I played knight d7. And here white played bishop f4, which surprisingly is not the best move. Defending the pawn and developing... So better was bishop h6, according to the Lee chess engine. Yeah, and now if I take on e5, I run into issues with bishop g7. So say queen takes, white can swap and then play this, and I've got two pieces hanging. Likewise, if knight takes e5, I think bishop g7 works. Same deal. So bishop h6, huh? Maybe I would have to play in a similar way to the game if that were to be played, like try to blockade the e6 square. Or the computer saying just cut your losses, give up a pawn, and try to try to soldier on. Take with the bishop. Yeah, white's up a clean pawn, but the game continues. So bishop f4, and I played queen b6. Now white played b4. This move really caught me by surprise. I just missed that move. See, the engine was going back and forth back and forth between castles and rook b1 and now e6 now it says b4 <laughs> the engine can't make up its mind about what to do this is the local engine analysis on lee chess you can you can toggle this on and off with this button up here that's kind of nice good feature yeah b4 i thought once i saw that move i had a very bad feeling i had a sinking feeling that i was going to lose When you're already in a worse position and you consistently miss moves that your opponent is playing, it just becomes harder and harder mentally to stay in the game because you feel like you're getting outplayed. And you are out getting outplayed most of the time <laughs> if that's happening. Yeah, b4 is nasty. Because if white were to castle here and defend the b2 pawn, I feel like I have more hope in this structure. At least white's not going to be able to directly come at me as they did in the game. Because... My queen is in the vicinity of their king, so maybe I can create some counterplay, stir up some trouble. Still looks very good for white, but black is not dead. But b4, on the other hand, just gaining space and pushing me back and retaining the option of castling short. This was not fun. And here I played knight f8, just trying to maneuver for that e6 square. A5 is the computer's recommendation, but if A5, C5, I have to go back here. I didn't want this scenario where my queen is just stuck on the A file. It looked awful. And indeed, plus one and a half. That does not inspire confidence, but... Could be better than what I did. Knight F8. 
c5. Yeah, again, the engine wants to play queen a7. I can hardly stomach that move. <laughs> I tried to play queen d8. At least creating a threat. Bishop h4, skewering the queen to the king. But rook d1 is a good reply. And then bishop d7. Yeah, note that I can't play bishop h4 here because of rook takes d8 check. And my bishop will be undefended after I take with the king. So I have to block. And now white just castled. Now white's up a pawn. They have a great deal more space. My king is in jeopardy. The game is pretty much decided. It just depends on um, if white can convert from here. Convert their advantage. So here I played knight e6. Trying to, I don't know, come at this bishop and prepare castling. Just trying to blockade as well. I guess knight takes f4 is not a move that I'll be playing next if given the chance. So more so just to blockade white's e-pawn and prepare castling short. And queen f2. White played this right away. This is the move that really surprised me. The engine doesn't like it so much. I mean, still gives a big advantage to white after this, but white was plus 4 had they played knight a4. Hmm. But it does pose the direct question to the f7 pawn. White simply is planning to move this bishop probably to h6, as you saw, and attack f7. I don't think I have a good counter. So I played queen c7. Better is to take and then do what? Castle? I thought that ran into bishop g4, though. Attacking the bishop, so hitting that pin bishop with rook and light square bishop. Bishop g5, queen f2. Okay, so the engine wants me to sack my queen is what it advocates here, which would also be bad. Hmm. Maybe more chances, practically speaking. Okay, so I played queen c7. I thought castling queenside might give me a chance. White played bishop h6, uncovering the attack on f7. Yeah, now they took... I think there was one other possibility I was considering here that might be worth mentioning. I thought about castling short, and then after bishop h6 playing like queen e8, I think is forced because I have to get another defender on f7. And giving up this rook and trying to somehow play this position, like let's say I take with, I'm not sure which way is best, but let's say I take with the bishop. The engine says plus three, but at least I'm not getting crushed in the tactics department immediately. Knight a4 does look pretty strong though, coming to b6 and hitting that bishop, and maybe the rook in the corner. It's losing, but uh, in this way I might stay solid for a few moves. So I tried to whisk my king away. Queen takes f7. And here I played bishop f8, looking to swap. I believe I thought about bringing a rook to e8 as well. This move, I think, I was worried that white could sacrifice on d7. Rook d6 is another engine suggestion even like bishop g4 looks good bishop c4 the computer is pining for does this work though take maybe not take bishop g4 i guess i i can check and go pick up this knight hmm. but white can just play a calm move yeah bishop c4 pumping up the pressure I think there's always going to be tactics. Like, if I take here now, knight a4 coming to b6 again. This move is particularly nasty, and white has it at almost any moment. Knight a4 trying to jump into b6. So, bad position once again. Bishop f8 isn't helping my cause. If rook h8, however, hoping for something like this, I suppose. White can keep the pressure on. They don't have to take h7. So, rook h8... Bishop c4. King b8 is best. I think, again, if I do this, knight a4 is going to be a big problem. Everything is too fragile. I'm held together by a string here. So on bishop f8, white played knight a4. Yep, good move that I missed. And here my best bet is to take on c5, which looks particularly desperate, but I'm already minus five and a half. <laughs> so I played king b8. If I were to take on h6, just to illustrate what would happen, so knight b6 check, 
king here, knight takes d7, and I can give up the exchange, which will be very bad after rook takes d7. Or let's say king here, just take on e6 and whites up a clean piece. So I played king b8, but then knight b6 hitting the bishop. Bishop came back, and I think white found the, the best way to finish me off. Rook came into f7 with check. I can't block on d7 because white has one, two, three attackers there. And they would just win a piece by taking. So king b8, rook takes d8, knight takes d8, and at the end of this line they pick up my bishop on f8. So I resigned. So strong play by the Riga Magician. He was on top of me from the moment I played bishop e7, I think. So right on move 10 in the opening. Yeah, just uh, I can't scroll down and show you my average centi pawn. He had a 17, I had a 52. <laughs> five inaccuracies, five mistakes. At least I didn't commit any blunders, but yeah, my position snowballed downhill starting with e5. Well, really starting with bishop e7. Yeah, I mean, it's possible to trace it back even further. Like, I'm pretty sure right here, knight c6 is even a small mistake. If white can just do this and then... I can't favorably take on a3, so I try to save my bishop, and it seems like white is very much for choice. So, good game to my opponents. Have to look into this line. I'll probably go back to regular hedgehog structures, but we'll see. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any questions or comments, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.